me tell you, let me let, let me tell you what I I'm gonna tell you a secret that I never told anyone. I, I work these fools. And look, I'm not even talking about like being on. I'm talking about honing my craft, getting better, like changing up my lingo, changing up my fashion, having currency with what I say. And there are certain things I do to try to get better. Like I write jokes. Like I, I'm, I think I'm going to do some stand up at some point. And it's not even really because I'm trying to like turn it into a career. It just if you're doing this, it helps like your deliveries and your punchlines. Like somebody watching me talk be like, oh, he talking slow. I could talk fast if I want. I could talk slow if I want. Sometimes I just want to draw you in to what I'm about to say. And then boom, a lot of people say jokes, but they don't know how to land them. Or a lot of people have are funny, but they don't know how to deliver. Comedic timing. Correct. And so that goes into what we do. I'm not, the E is for entertainment. You know, anybody can look at a box score like, hey, man, you had 24 points and nine assists. Uh, you know, what a great dunk, you know? And so that's things that I do that help me have 20 years in the game and continue to reinvent myself. What does it mean to get into these other things outside of media? Because it sounds like, you know, growing up, you did so many different things. When you were playing basketball, you started thinking about media. Now that you are a media superstar, what are you thinking about film, writing, comedy, whatever? Like, how seriously do you take those other avenues? When you've functioned in that space for as long as I have, basically professionally since 1994, but really living it my entire life, there were so many other sides of me, so many other sides of my brain that I still needed to activate. And so writing a column for the New York Post, the oldest publication in the United States, plus doing a podcast called The Renaissance Man, who's one of the top rated podcasts in the entire industry. I looked down at my phone a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, number 19 in the world? I'm like, wow. Like there are a zillion people with podcasts. And so I created something and I'm really fortunate that I'm doing right now that ain't nobody, nobody, nobody on my Spike Lee, nobody. And you know, by the way, I could be humble, I could be meek, but sometimes if you don't toot your own horn, the music ain't playing. So let me just tell you something. And plus we brought you here today to turn up because really this is a lesson for the viewers. So I right. want you to give it to us raw and unfocused. what they want. So I'm doing two podcasts. Both highly rated, Jalen and Jacoby, sports, renaissance men, entertainment, fashion, culture, analysts on a seasonal sports show, NBA Countdown. That's a big stage, Christmas Day in the NBA Finals. Those are the biggest stages in basketball, right? Help launch a show, get up. Now, the show is more from now into like more of a football seasonal show, but to kick the show off, the show used to be three hours, not two, and it used to have one analyst, not 10, me. So what I remember, I was talking about Blanton, I was talking about Urban Meyer, I was talking about whatever was Kurt, Colin Kaepernick, okay? So that's the sports side. And then I mentioned to you, writing a column and doing the Renaissance Man. Um, Wolfgang Puck, Gail King, Killer Mike, Big Sean, 50 Cent. Have like the, 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 your favorite, Gabrielle Union, your favorite industry tastemakers, tastemakers been on that show. So let me know, wake me up with somebody writing a column, doing two podcasts while juggling three TV shows.